Green Tree Productions is proud to present Duncanville Weekly News. It's the good news just for the city of champions, Duncanville, Texas. And now, here's your host, John Thompson. Hello world, America, Texas, and Duncanville, and welcome to this edition of Duncanville Weekly News for the last part of April, first part of May 2018. Glad you're logged on and watching. Well, on this show, we've got the Panther highlights. The baseball team is winding down their district play. We will show you the highlights of those games and recognize the Lady Panther softball team. Also, local elections are coming up, and we've got tidbits from each of the candidates forums that were held last week of each of the candidates. But first, the Duncanville Panther basketball team held their banquet last week, and here are some tidbits. Uh, we're have some good the Panther basketball us. banquet was held at the Sandra Meadows Arena on Wednesday night, and A.D. Clint Harper was the master of ceremonies, and that was due to the Panthers being between head coaches right now. And it was the first item, the traditional season highlights video prepared by you know who then all the players were introduced parents y'all probably know uh, but our coaching staff is very very difficult to play for us it's very difficult so these guys can go for me I think especially for the seniors I think all of them might have opportunity to advance to the next level and I can tell you they do they're going to be physically and mentally prepared to go to play anywhere if they get the opportunity. That's not going to be an issue. So, then Coach Harper announced the district 7-6-A all-district players. I, I'm going to start here. 7-6-A uh, second team all-district, Jabron Hill. <laughs> okay, first team all-district, Jacoby Pearson. <laughs> Seven six A first team all district Stephen Quinn. <laughs> Seven six A first team all district Cameron Masson. <laughs> and seven six A first team all district Douglas Meredith. <laughs> Then A.D. Harper announced a new award for so Duncanville Letter Winner Athletes. As it's academic all Duncanville. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, as an athletic director, I'm going to provide a patch for your letter jacket. If you oh. award academic all, academic all Duncanville. Our first recipient of academic all Duncanville, Jeremiah Coleman. Academic All Duncanville. He's actually probably going to get two patches because he's going to get one for basketball and he's going to get one for football. Yeah! <laughs> Going through the adversity, all the things 
that you guys went through this past year in the basketball season, I have no doubt that y'all are going to be successful young men in the future. I have no doubt about that. So, again, that goes back to your parents. And so, again, parents, I want to say thank you one more time. So let's give the parents one more time. It's springtime here in Texas, and that means Duncanville Panther baseball right here on Duncanville Weekly News and the Panther Dugout Show. The Panther Dugout Show brings us updates and highlights of the past few games and a peek ahead to the Panthers' next games. The Panther Dugout Show is brought to us by Jane's Memorial Chapel, the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James, by Leon Miller Commercial Properties, Singla Dental, Chubby's Family Restaurant on Cockle Hill, and by the Wolverton Company. And now, with the Panther Dugout Show, here's John with all the highlights. Hello, Duncanville baseball fans, and welcome back to the Panther Dugout Show. Well, right off the bat, Let's take a look at this. The Panther softball team has had an undefeated season for the first time in its 25-year history. And, of course, won District 7-6A, the championship. They prepare for the playoffs against some team from down I-35 or maybe San Angelo. Congratulations, Coach Brett Duff and the Lady Panthers, and good luck in the upcoming playoffs. Since the last show, the Panthers have played four district games, and here's how they did. Tuesday evening in DeSoto, the Panthers played the Eagles, who are the cellar dwellers in the district, with Irving, and this was a good one. The facility and appearance of the team and field in DeSoto has much improved in the last couple of years, and after everybody was introduced... It's game time, and Nick Flores is on the mound for the Panthers to start this game. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning with no score, and DeSoto has a runner on second base with one out, and then this double plates the Eagles' first run. But that's it for the fourth, and it's one to nothing Eagles after four. In the Eagles' fifth, they get a runner on third and first with one out, and they score their run number two on this slowly hit ball to the right side of the infield. And at this point, Cesar is relieved by Nick, and he gets the Panthers out of the inning with only the one run. So it's two to nothing, Eagles, after five. We go to the top of the seventh, still two to nothing. Eagles and Noah leads off, drawing a bases on balls. Then David walks. And Noah goes to second. Another walk to Cesar, loads the bases, and Elijah runs for him, and Isaiah goes over and runs for Noah at third. Ray is next, and he hits it to the second baseman whose throw forced out Elijah at second, but no double play, and Isaiah scores, and it's 2-1, to one. Eagles. Then with one away, and Ray on second, and Elijah on third, Adam swings at a third strike in the dirt, and when the catcher can't handle it, Isaiah scores, and Adam is safe at first. It's due to time, and Adam gets in a rundown between first and second, and Ray breaks for the plate, and the Eagles' second baseman hits the wall behind home plate, and Ray scores, and it's 3-2 to two Panthers. Adam is on third. Then Nick grounds the ball past the shortstop to left field, scoring Adam, and it's 4-2 to two Panthers. Then Davis gets hit by a pitch, and Adam moves to second. When Nick F. singles... Sharply, too sharply to center. Nick C is thrown out trying to score. 
And we go to the bottom of the seventh with the Panthers leading 4-2. to two. Nick Flores comes in to finish the game on the bump. With the runner on first with one out, this hit to right gets past Cesar. And the runner on first scored to make it 4-3 to three with the tying run on second. We don't get too many defensive highlights, but here's one. Ground ball to Adrian, who throws out the runner at first, and when the runner on second tries to go to third, Noah nails him to Ray for out number three. The game is over. Final, Panthers four and the Eagles three as the Panthers keep their playoff hopes alive. The Panther Dugout Show is sponsored by the Wolverton Company, serving Duncanville, Southwest Dallas area for over 78 years. Wolverton has been a proud sponsor of Duncanville Weekly News since their day one in 1991. From H.W. to Thomas to Keith to Matthew, Wolverton provides the best heating and cooling and air conditioning service there is. Call them at 972 972- 296 cool that's 972 296 2665 it's the soto week at at least 3 days of it is as this is what coach Rombach field looked like friday night as wind and rain and low temperatures forced the game to saturday evening and everything had changed except the wind The fans still had to bundle up a little bit to keep comfortable. And we found out later that the reason they didn't play Friday night was because there were no umpires around. Did I say except for the wind? And it uh, affected some of the plays, as we'll see later in the game. Nick Flores was on the mound for the Panthers to start the game. In the top of the first with two outs, the Eagles have a runner on third, and this pop-up, easy to right. Can't see the wind, and... (laughs) Adrian drops it, and the Eagles score first. Nick strikes out the next batter, but after half inning, it's one to nothing Eagles. In the bottom of the first, David leads off, reaching second base on a shortstop throwing error. He went to third on a ground out, and then with two outs and Adrian at the plate, A bouncing away pitch played at David. And we're tied at one after one. In the Panthers' second inning, Adam leads off with a walk. And he takes second on another pitch that bounced toward the plate. Nick C. sacrifices him to third. And yet another uncaught pitch plates him to make it two to one. Devin walks, and then he steals second. Elias singles to left, and Devin takes third. Do dead time, and Devin scores. And after two, it's three to one, Panthers. In the Eagle third, they have a runner on third with only one out, and this pop out to Ray at third is out number two. But the next batter hits a blooper to center to score the Eagles' second run. And after two and a half, it's three to two, Panthers. 
We go to the bottom of the fifth with it still three to two, and with one out, Ray singles to center and takes second base when the Eagle center fielder lets the ball get past him. Hector's back, and he grounds to short, but the throw to first is not caught, and Ray trots home with Panther run number four, and Hector is on first. Adrian is next, and he slaps a single to left, and Hector takes second. Then Adam lays down a bunt that doesn't even draw a throw to load the bases. Nick C. grounds it to the left side, but the third baseman can't handle it. And Hector scores. Run number five, and the bases are still loaded. But not for long, as the first pitch to Devin hits the wall behind the plate, and it's 6-2 to two Panthers as Adrian scores. The Panthers really put it away in the sixth, still leading 6-2 to two as Noah leads off with a sharp single to left. Then with one away, Ray follows suit. And Isaiah runs for him. Did I mention that Hector is back? He hits the right field fence for a three-bagger to score Isaiah and Ray. And it's 8-2 to two Panthers. Adrian walks. And Adam is next, and he singles to center. And when the Eagle center fielder hits the wall behind home plate with his throw, both Hector and Adrian score, and it's 10-2. to two. And Adam goes to third. Nick C. then hits a sacrifice fly to right field to plate Adam. And after six, it's 11 to two, Panthers. In the Eagles' seventh, a strikeout, a fly out, and another strikeout ended it. And Mark is on the mound for the closeout. Final, Panthers 11 and DeSoto 2. The Panthers move to 4 and 6 and DeSoto to 2 and 8 in District 7, 6A play. Chubby's Family Restaurant on Cockrell Hill at Skyline is your full-service restaurant for Duncanville. Open from 6 to 9, Monday through Thursdays, till 10 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays. They feature traditional American cuisine. They offer takeout and delivery and are one of the very best catering restaurants in the area. Call 972-298-1270 and find out for yourself. Jane's Memorial Chapel is the only family-owned funeral home in Duncanville and is proud to offer caring and dedicated services from familiar friends. Rick Jane's and his family, the owners of Jane's Memorial Chapel and Funeral Home, have served Duncanville area families in their time of loss since 1998. A beautiful and spacious chapel is offered and Jane's serves all cemeteries. When it comes to finding people you can trust in a time of need, you can turn to Jane's Memorial Chapel. No one else knows families better. 811 South Cockrell Hill in Duncanville. Another do or die game for the Panthers Tuesday night as it's Irving MacArthur week, starting at Coach Bob Brombeck Field. Nick Flores is on the mound to start for the Panthers 
this day. And it wasn't a real good start as the Cardinals hit two home runs in the top of the first to lead three to nothing. We go to the Panther second, and Adam leads off with a single to left. It's called hitting them where they ain't, and that's what Nick C. does. Looping a ball over the shortstop's head. And Adam goes to second, and there's no outs. Then Devin lays down a bunt that nobody wanted to field. And this loaded the bases. Noah's next, and he slashes a pitch to left field to score Adam. And it's 3-1. to one. And the bases are still loaded with nobody out. Nick F. is next, and he hits it to second to force out Noah. But on the play, Nick C. scores, and the Panthers get their second run. But that was it for the second inning, and it's 3-2 to two Cardinals. We go to the Panther fourth, still trailing 3-2. to two, And Devin leads off with a walk, and he's still second. Then Nick F. rolls it to the right center field fence for a triple. And, of course, it scores Devin, and now it's tied at three apiece. David is next, and he wastes no time plating Nick for the go-ahead run with a shot to center field up the middle. And after four, it's four to three Panthers. Mark Abira comes in to pitch as we go to the top of the seventh, and it's still four to three Panthers. The Cardinals get two walks with two outs in their seventh, and Coach Fahey calls on Cesar to save it, but he walks the first batter he faces, and this loads the bases. But the second batter he faces flies out to David. And it's over. Final Panthers four and the MacArthur Cardinals three. The Panthers stay alive to travel to MacArthur on Friday. Singla Dental, your hometown dental office, is proud sponsors of our DHS athletes and the Panther Dugout Show on Duncanville Weekly News. Singla Dental offers convenient, extended hours, and same-day appointments are available. Located at 541 West Wheatland with a website of www.singladental.com and the telephone number of 972-298-4677. That's Singla Dental. Leon Miller Commercial Properties is a proud sponsor of the Panthers Dugout Show on Duncanville Weekly News. As he enjoys helping to promote our DHS athletes as no one else is. Leon owns office and retail space in the heart of Duncanville on Main Street. If you're looking for a convenient, accessible, and well-kept space to rent, call Leon at 972-709-7181. He'll fix you up. Then on Friday evening, it was up to MacArthur to complete the two-game set with the Cardinals. And the weather was pleasant, a little wind. And after everybody was introduced prior to the game, the Panthers sent five batters to the plate in their first, but they didn't score. Number 15, Alec Rodriguez. Number 17, Jose. Hector started on the bump for the Panthers in this one. And we go to the Cardinal fourth with two on and one out and no score. And this infield fly is the second out. And then when they bunt, Nick's throw is not caught, but Noah recovers and throws home. And Ray is run over. 
Jumped over. Out. So, after four, it's still scoreless. In the Panther fifth with one away, Elias hits what appears to be a high fly to center, but the Mac center fielder misplays it. And Elias is on second. Then David lays down a sacrificed bunt and is called out on first on a real close play. Warranting a visit by Coach Fahey to the official. But Elias scores on this wild pitch anyway. And after four and a half, it's one to nothing, Panthers. We go to the bottom of the six, and the Cardinals have runners on first and second with one away. And Cesar relieves Hector on the mound. A sack bunt is handled by Hector, and the runners are on second and third. The next batter singles to right to plate the tying run. And leaves runners on third and first. But a strikeout, and then this comebacker to Cesar ended the inning and leaving the score tied now at one apiece after six. The Panthers did not score in their seventh, and in the MacArthur seventh, they have a runner on second, and this sacrifice bunt works as the throw from Cesar is late to third, and the batter also is on first. The next batter makes a suicide squeeze bunt, and the runner on third scores the winning run for the Cardinals. Final, MacArthur two and the Panthers one, as the playoff hopes for the Panthers just got a little dimmer. Each show, we have a play of the week, and this time it was at DeSoto in the bottom of the seventh with one out. The Eagles have the tying run on second. And this ground out to second was the second out. And when the runner on second broke for third, Noah throws to Ray. Ray catches and tags him out for out number three to end the game with a Panther win. And that's why it's the play of the week. The play of the week is brought to us by the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James. For all your investment needs, call John at 972-780-0533 or come by 222 East Wheatland right here in Duncanville. It's the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James. With just one week of action left, here are the District 7 6A standings. Cedar Hill is the outright leader at 9-3. South Grand Prairie and Irving MacArthur are 8-4. Grand Prairie and Irving Nimitz seven and five. The Panthers are five and seven, and then DeSoto and Irving are two and ten. To make the playoffs, the Panthers have to sweep Grand Prairie, and Irving MacArthur has to sweep Nimitz. The last week is going to be an important one for everybody, and here's what the Panthers have. It's the final week of the regular season schedule. And the Panthers play those Grand Prairie Gophers first Tuesday there and then here on Friday, and it's Parents' Night. The Panthers have got to sweep the Gophers, and MacArthur has got to sweep Nimitz for the Panthers to make the playoffs. Be back on or before May the 8th with highlights of those games and more. Well, the local elections are coming up, and... The candidates had forums that they attended last week. And here are some excerpts from each of the candidates that attended those forums. Um, But I've served on the city council before in 2011-2012 where I learned a lot about the city. I I learned a lot to know that everything can't be implemented right away. 
I've learned that some things you may want to do, it takes time to get them done. However, I think I know that I'm the best candidate because I have the time, I have the experience to get it done. You know, we're not really preparing for next generations. You know, it just seems like we're doing, we keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And we've got to prepare. And if we don't prepare, then my generation and generations after me will not move here. Well, this is my journey to do something. This is my journey to knock on doors, to find out what my neighbors are thinking, to find out what's going on. In my, in my campaign, knocking on doors, I have learned so much about our neighborhoods. There is something for everyone in our neighborhood. High income, middle income, low income, black, white, Hispanic, and renters. But we have to come together as a community to consolidate what is Duncanville. Duncanville is old, Duncanville is new, and Duncanville is in between. And our communities need to become more jailed as a community. There are, there are three reasons I care about Duncanville. I care about economic development. I'm a banker. I've been in banking for the past 40 years. I worked at the same bank for the last 24 years. So that brings me the experience of working with small businesses, working with the finance of companies, working with companies. So what if, and talking with our residents, one of the key components, and you will probably find that similarity with each one of the, the candidates up here, talking about economic development. I'm very unhappy with uh, us not being very business friendly. I think these are things that we really need to improve because as Mark was stating and others, that without the business that your taxes are just gonna increase and you're gonna be paying forever. Forum hosted by the Duncanville Chamber of Commerce and the Duncanville Rotary. What we are doing tonight is extremely important, and the hopes of the Duncanville Chamber of the Duncanville Rotary is that we provide a nonpartisan, unbiased, and impartial format for community members to make an informed vote. And so, what you're going to see from me is you're going to see somebody that can build a consensus, and you're going to see somebody that doesn't have uh, an agenda. The only agenda that possible is, is to make Duncanville better. But this city means a lot to us. And the things that I would focus on are the infrastructure. If we're going to bring the infrastructure in here, we are going to bring more business in here as well. I was chosen and appointed by our current District 4 representative, Dr. Dotson, and the City Council to represent District 4 on that steering committee that worked with the consultants to put the comprehensive plan together. That's important because that's going to be one of the major things this city council needs to do, and that's prioritize the comprehensive plan. I have that experience, my opponents don't. I'm asking you to look at the credentials that I have for you today, knowing that I have the experience and I also have the time to make our city as great as it has been in the past and the way it's going to be in the future. I'm running because there is a need to change the way our tax dollars are being spent. I am running because I want to be more accountable for salary and staff of city staff. I am running because I don't want to see the same lack of presentation, representation in my district. I think that we need to move forward with our young people, but we can't forget our seasoned people because that's what makes Dr. Bill strong. That's the history we pull in from our seasoned people. So keeping that in mind as we move forward with these comprehensive plans that we have to include everyone, not only every race, but every age group as well. He did RSVP for the forum, and his biography and platform were in the packet passed out, but Barry Gordon, the first candidate to file for mayor, was unable to attend due to a flu problem. But if you're a Duncanville voter, there's probably going to be some information on this guy on your doorstep real soon, if not already. And, of course, you can go online and find out everything you need to know. As we close, let's see some more scenes from the Duncanville Panther Basketball Banquet, and we'll see you back here on May the 8th. Can't touch this. Can't touch this. Break it down.
pitch is great. It's really, that's unprecedented because there's only five spots. And so, uh, yeah, that is really, really impressive. I don't know if I've ever seen that in my 20 plus years of coaching. Seven, six, eight, first team all district, Jacoby Pearson. Seven, six, eight, first team all district, Stephen Quinn. Seven, six, eight, first team all district, Cameron Massey. And seven, six, eight, first team all district, Douglas Meredith. Give these young men around.